Greetings and welcome. I am Dr. Nielsen, founder of Nielsen Holistic. On this video, on this training video, I'm going to be shortly discussing about muscle testing. You know, what is manual muscle testing? It's been around for a long time. And then what most people think of muscle testing is more the applied kinesiology or the applied manual muscle test. So I'll be discussing both of those. We'll be talking about the research. Is there any research, especially on the, the applied kinesiology? this applied manual muscle test, is there research backing it up? And, and what happens when we add a sensory stimulus to a manual muscle test, is that going to change? Or is what so many people say out there, oh, this muscle testing stuff, it's just all woo-woo, it's just weird stuff. Well, let's talk about it. A manual muscle test has been used for hundreds of years. It ha it's a great diagnostic tool. Physical therapists use it, medical doctors use it, chiropractors use it, neurologists use it to find out, diagnose, in the sense of, let's say a neurologist, to find out if nerves are actually conducting, they're actually working. So for example, if we, if we were to say, let's use a mid-deltoid, a mid-deltoid test, and we're finding out if this actually is strong against gravity, so this would be a plus three, a plus two would be, I can't hold it up against gravity, plus one would be, it's just barely firing. So we can look at atrophy of the muscle and find out, if, is it actually working? Are the, muscle tendon, are the muscles firing? Plus four would be that I'm able to hold it up strong, but I'm not able to resist it when somebody pushes down. And then a plus five would be that I'm able to hold it up strong against gravity, but somebody can actually, I can hold against resistance. That's a plus five. How is this beneficial? To a neurologist, he can actually find out the nerve that's going from the nerve root from the brachial plexus or from up in the brain, is it firing appropriately the C5? If it isn't, where's the impingement? Is it at the brachial plexus? Is it up in the inner vertebral frame and at the, right at the vertebrae? Is it up in the cranial, is it up into the uh, central nervous system, meaning up into the, or in the spinal cord or up into the brain? So we can actually find if there's brain lesions from that. Does it warrant then an MM, uh, MRI or a functional MRI to find out functionally if what's going on? What, why is this? this muscle not able to fire? Or is it simply that there's an impingement at the joint? Or is it simply for the chiropractor or the physical therapist that, you know what, the, the upper trap isn't firing appropriately, it's causing the mid-deltoid to not fire appropriately as well? Or for the orthopedist, is there a rupture tendon? You know, I can't even hold up here, I can't even, I can barely fire a few muscles, or a few muscle fibers, but I can't actually hold it against gravity. So is there a rupture? Is there a complete rupture? Does it warrant, again, an MRI to have surgery? All these different things. Is it, is it only using ligament now, me, meaning the tendon has been ruptured? So it's a great diagnostic tool, and we've been able to use that for hundreds of years to find out, you know, is the nerve working? Is the muscle or is the tendon ruptured? Is there other, other problems with the joint? A great diagnostic tool. So then George Goodhart comes along and he says, well, what about if we can apply this and actually add in a sensory stimulus? So st sensory stimulus would be, look at something, look at a certain color, hear a certain sound. You know, if I put a tuning fork to this area, does it cause this muscle to go weak? Does, so put muscle testing aside. Let's say when I walk in the room and it's my wife. Well, my pupils actually enlarge slightly I get excited to see my wife. I might even, it might make me smile. My temperature might slightly rise. Well, we're not, a lot of us aren't super trained to recognize that, oh, that, that, that skin is slightly turning warmer or the eyes are slightly widening. Many of us aren't trained in that. But somebody can say, when my wife walks in the room, my muscle holds strong interesting because it's a sensory stimulus so when we receive stimulus there's a change throughout our whole body have you ever taken your blood pressure you might see something on you wake up from a, a dream and your heart is pounding i'll talk about that another time and that's more with emotions and and physiology emotions is a physiology i'll i'll, I'll talk about that at the end what i'm trying to say is there's stimulus if we could read our skin well enough, in fact, there are machines that when we input a frequency or a stimulus, input, our body says, oh, I don't like that or I do like that. 
we can actually use the skin as an antenna. All we're doing is correlating that then, the applied manual muscle test or applied kinesiology, all we're trying to do then is apply that and find out if the muscle is, is staying strong or weak. Well, what does the research say? Because that's what I want to know, because I like to practice things that have actually gone through science and actually been proven, have, have actually been shown that these things work not just because there's testimonials. I want to know. <coughs> so let's take a look. This was who is now medical doctor, executive and medical, Daniel A. Monty. He's executive and medical director of the Thomas Jefferson University Myrna Bryan Integrative Medicine. That's a mouthful. This is somebody who's very important in the scientific and medical world. John Sincock, Mark Machesi, Elizabeth S. J. S. Kunkel, and Jeffrey M. Greeson published in Perceptual and Motor Skills. They said, well, if we add a sensory stimulus, is that true? Will it really, will this muscle really stay strong? Or is it only for a frank muscle test? We're testing nerves, we're testing if tendons are ruptured. Or is it true that if I add something into my stimulus or a stimulus into my energy field, it's gonna cause a change. It's gonna cause my skin to maybe slightly blush. Or it's gonna cause a muscle to hold slightly stronger. I mean, think about it. You connect the dots there. If positive things are coming in, wouldn't that cause our holistic being to work at a higher rate of what we want it to do? In this case, hold a muscle strong? Or, do you kind of see where I'm going here? Okay, so they said, this study investigated differences in values of manual muscle tests after exposure to congruent and incongruent semantic stimuli. Muscle testing with a computerized, so they said, okay, let's take out human error. Let's use a computer dynamometer. A dynamometer is simply testing the strength of a muscle. And it was performed on a deltoid muscle group of 89 healthy college students after repetitions of congruent, true, and incongruent, false, self referential semantic statements. So they're actually saying a statement, a self-referential, meaning referring back to the person. The order of which statements were repeated was controlled by a counterbalance design. The combined data showed that when I said a true, a congruent statement, the muscle held stronger and longer, stronger and longer. So I say, my name is Dr. Nielsen, strong. That is my perception. I perceive that to be true. I added the stimulus or somebody else could say, your name is Dr. Nielsen, <laughs> strong. You're wearing a light blue, uh, light blue, uh, what is this called? Scrub. You're wearing a light blue scrub top. <laughs> true, stronger and longer. Sure enough, order effects were not significant. Overall significant differences were found in muscle test responses between congruent and incongruent semantic stimuli. Research showing, sure enough, it works. What about the, if it's an old doctor, new doctor, is it gonna hold more, stronger or weaker for them? Test in 2003, this is by Pollard, uh, Brownie Lucky. Conclusions, the manual muscle test procedures um, using the anterior deltoid or psoas showed good inter-examiner reliability when used by an experienced and or a novice user. There's the research. What about this research? Uh, Goodhart, they, oh, this was um, reliability and validity of manual muscle testing. They're looking at a literature review. They looked at 100 manual muscle testing, so reviews of 100 a, uh, experiments, and they said overall we conclude that this is very beneficial, manual muscle testing, both in manual muscle testing and applied manual muscle testing or applied kinesiology is useful in diagnostic, it's beneficial, we also would recommend that there's some more follow-up random clinical trials, randomized clinical trials, et cetera, et cetera. Does it work? Yes, especially with the congruent and incongruent statements, as I was saying. Well, that's powerful. Well, I still have some people out there who are saying, yeah, but it's not really taught. Well, it's taught by the Applied International College of Applied Kinesiology. People will say, oh, it doesn't work. There's many testimonials plus the research. 
What about if it was taught at a major university? Well, just as I said, the executive and medical director at Thomas Jefferson University, who just in June of 2014, the school, it's a very prestigious school over in Pennsylvania, just received $110 million by Kimmel, the billionaire Kimmel. It's a great school. Does Dr. Monty use this manual muscle testing? Of course he does. Well, where else is it taught? How about one of the most prestigious universities in all of Australia, Notre Dame University? I was there at the announcement when they announced they were teaching the manual muscle testing. I was there, I was privileged to be there. So does manual muscle testing work? For me, an absolute yes. Does the literature say, does the experimenting show and say it works? Absolutely. But not only the manual muscle testing, but the applied manual muscle test, the applied kinesiology. And it can be used for the novice and it can be used for the experience. Now, it's also a slippery slope though. You have to be careful. What are you testing? Congruent and incongruent statements. You're using it to test the person's perception, your perception, my perception. My perception is that this is a blue uh, scrub top. My perception is that my, my name is Dr. Nielsen. My name is Brandon Nielsen. That is my perception. I perceive that to be true. It's a congruent statement. So we can test that. When we start testing many other things like a, a true or false statement, it doesn't work. What about testing who's going to win the horse race? It doesn't work. You can't test future. You can't test somebody else, what's going to happen to somebody else. I don't know. It is my perception, my re reality, my, emotion, my emotional reality. And so some of the work done by Kenneth Purd, when we talk about emotions, where are emotions stored? Let me just say this. It may surprise you that emotion is not the product of your brain, but are expressed, experienced, and stored in what she called the body-mind, in your body. So emotions are physiology. They're proteins, they're special substances stored in the organs, the glands, the tissues of the body. They're a physiologic response to a sensory stimulus. Some of those emotions, however, get stuck or never become extinguished, as Pavlov said. You remember the salivating dog? The dog keeps salivating, the emotion never gets extinguished. So we'll talk about that next in our next video on how Manual muscle testing works in conjunction with the physiologic or emotions, which are a physiologic response. I hope this helped. Manual muscle testings work. They can help us diagnose if a muscle or a tendon is ruptured, if a muscle is actually firing. They can help us find out where a nerve is working or not. And they can also help us with sensory stimulus and finding out where emotions or where we're congruent or incongruent. Some people might see that like a lie detector test, congruent and incongruent statements with us so that we can once again be balanced. I hope this helped. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. I am Dr. Nilsson. Remember this, live in fullness every day.